Okay, guys, the time is on, so let's start. Good morning, friends, and welcome to this interesting session on digital supply chain. You'll see under the digital supply chain, I've mentioned the new world, the new talent needs, and the new job opportunity. So when we talk of the new world, I'm not talking of futuristic vision or a dream world. Let me give example to you, one of the examples. Let's say you're working with an airline company. You need a spare parts. Your plane may be costing around, say, $400 million, and the plane is cannot be used because some spare parts are not there. You place an order in a traditional way. Spare parts comes after a month. And you can imagine a plane of $300 million not able to fly. You're losing your money. So suppose we have... Again, I'm putting in a futuristic as well as a realistic situation. You have the CAD design. You have the 3D printer. So 3D printer makes the components for you. I know so far the 3D printers are being used for the plastic and some metallic components, but I'm sure in the time to come, you could think of 3D printer for metallic. You could think of obviously plastics, concrete, even human tissues also. There are. So the part is made through the 3D printer. Part is sent to you through the robotic again, loads it on the truck. The truck is a self-driving autonomous car, autonomous vehicle. It is coming to your areas around, to your office. Drone picks it up and delivers to you. You can think of that whole chain. And then later on, the, the truck goes, this autonomous car truck, it goes back to its own parking place. So this whole thing is digital. The processes are digital, as well as what the whole movements and everything around is also digital. The transaction, the documentations, what is required around is all digital. So the word, when I said the new word, so the example I quote you was, I mean, you may call futuristic, but this is happening in many places around. So when we move to the digital world, we are talking about the new talent needs. How can we live with the old techno ideas around, old mindset around, when we are moving into digitization around? So all these things brings to the new job opportunities also. Some jobs will go away and some new jobs will come up. When I look at my four decades around, I've seen those days when people used to be, I'm a typewriter, I'm a, I'm a typist, I'm a steno, those jobs are gone. Same way I would say the job evolution is part of the life. So when we talk of digitalizations, the new world will come up, emerge around. New talents are required and new job opportunities. So with this background, let me start the agenda part. So what we plan to cover up today. The first part I want to focus on is what is digital journey? At the end of the day, we are talking of digital journey. So digital in processes, digital in documentation, digital also in money transfer also, if I move on the blockchain. Then there's a word called digitization, digitalization, and digital transformation. So what exactly it is all three of them? Is it same thing? Is it synonymous? Are they different? The third component which I plan to cover up around is understanding the concept of supply chain. What exactly is supply chain? I know most of you who are participating today, they understand what is supply chain. It's connecting all the organization, all the players which are involved from one end to another end. So one end could be a supplier or supplier, supplier, other end could be a customer. Another thing is the vision of Industry 4.0. What is missing, basically trying to motivate us to go into this? Everybody knows Industrial Revolution 1, Industrial Revolution 2, 3, and 4. So when we are moved to the Industrial Revolution 4, what exactly is 4 is trying to call it on? When I say industry, don't mix industry word with manufacturing alone. It could be a service industry, could be a manufacturing industry, all those are there around. Now the next one comes is, when suppose we make up our mind and we are motivated, said good, it's a good idea. We have to get into this supply chain 4.0. We have to become digital. So what is the framework? How do I go about it? So you make your framework around, and that's what I would like to walk through with you, the framework. 
The next thing what we want to talk around is the linear versus circular supply chain. Even one of the participants does even ask a question on this. What is linear? Straight line movements from one end, it goes to the next step, goes to the next step. You may have 100 players, but each one is moving from one end to another. But circular is really moving into more like a control towers and circular supply chain. Sometimes people link circular supply chain with circular economy also. Technology is enabling change in supply chain. Now we're talking of digitalization. Obviously, we need right human being. I'm not questioning it. But we also need technologies. So first we need to define what are the technologies, which are digital technologies, which will help us to make it digital. Then, then we need the people to train the people in those areas around. So they feel comfortable to use them. It's going to be change management again. And the future of supply chain. Where is supply chain going with all these changes around? Some people get scared, the jobs will go away. I would say job will not go away, but jobs will get, you will get more empowered in the process. You know? Jobs will evolve around. You will need more skills around. So learning will never stop. So whatever you learned in the college is not sufficient around. So you will have to upgrade your skills as well. So the key objective, the way I look around from the digital supply chain is to get maximum value from your supply chain. So what we are looking around that you have a supply chain, how do we get the value out of it? It is not just price reduction. How we can improve the experience of the customer also. That's what the focus is. Let's start with the digital journey. Now this actually goes back to 60s. From manual and analog to digitalize. So when I say manual and analog is nothing but the physical version. Now from physical version, moving into digitalization. That means I don't need a paper document. It's all online, soft copies. Even yesterday I heard around that you don't have to carry even your driving license. Around. It's a soft copy you have in your mobile phone. That's what you're talking about, digitalized platform. Now this all led to basically the globalization. In the past, we were scared to outsource something, even to the low-cost countries. But today we know very well that we are well-connected. Organization, maybe in any part of the world, they are well-connected. Individuals are well-connected. So in this globalized world, I think the whole I mean, the business has grown well. Productivity has improved. The costs have gone down. When the internet came in the beginning, it was a disrupt. In 90s, game-changing force for many industries. And I was very actively involved when I was working in Switzerland at that time, in Geneva. I was involved in developing EDI standards for them. We were coming with virtual private network, VPNs. Walmart was looking for EDI standards around. We were trying to develop EDI standards from the United Nations so people could communicate with the suppliers based in Japan and other places as well. Now, digitization, when we talk of, is reinventing the world economy with individuals, businesses, and societies becoming interconnected in real time. So individuals are well connected, businesses are connected, societies are well connected. So that type of world economy is are coming out of the digital. Now, let me also try to clarify the term which I said in the beginning in the agenda part. The term called digitization, the term called digitalization, and the last is transformation. So when we talk of digitization, it's something that I have got a document somebody has sent me. I scan it. So basically, I convert my hard copies into the soft copies. But the process is not creating the soft copy. The process is giving me a hard copies around, and then I scan it and transfer it to someone through email or something. That is digitization. We have got a big bunch of files in the office around. We say, guys, let's cut down the, this thing around. Can we scan all of them and store somewhere around? Your own personal file at home. You feel, guys, this is taking too much. Let me scan and so, so I don't lose them around. But when we talk of digitalization, we're talking of processes. We're talking of documentation. We're talking of transfer of money. 
all in a soft basis. Let me give a very good example around it. If I go to somebody's office, the guy has got papers, pen, computers. If I ask some information, the guy has the information in the computers in his own server. Nobody else can pull it until that person wants it. If I say, okay, can you tell me how much was the growth last year? The guy will go to the computers, pull out the information, make some calculations, some computation, and give it to me. So I would call this a hybrid system. It is not fully digitalized. The moment I say digitalization, I might be sitting in any part of the world. I can go online. I can pull the data myself. Now, what we are doing in digitalization, we might be doing function by function. I'm from finance. I'm from procurement. I'm from marketing. I'm my supplier, my customer. Everybody is doing their own. Everybody has their own servers, but we are not connected. If organizations are well connected around or all within the fund, even within the organization, like ERP has connected everybody around, but each function is also digitalized and connected together, then we call the business transformation. So it is not one business unit does it, all the business digitalize it and all are well connected, then we call the transformation. I hope this clarifies the concept of digitalization and transformation. So in short, what it helps you to collaborate because we have one cloud, we can move information very quickly, whether with the supplier, whether with the customers, we can collaborate. We can process can be automated because process knows very well. Once I receive this, I'll place order for this. Analyze analytics can be done side by side. So analytics has not to be a reactive function. Analytics could be proactive the moment I know this is going to happen and that data is already there and what is the implication of this system tells you what to do. Let's look at the way the world is moved already. The digital economy is already in place. I mean whether we like it or not is already in place and we cannot be distanced from others because we are in a global economy. We are in a competitive world and in a competitive world we have to be better than others to survive. Look at the digital disruption which is happening around. The very first one is the, the taxis. The largest taxi company, Uber, you know it. They don't own any taxis. It's all sharing economy, network economy. Then we have another one which provides accommodations, Skype, largest phone company, I would call it alone. It doesn't own any infrastructures. It's all over the internet. Then we have Alibaba, you can see, which owns no inventories around, but is the biggest retailer of the world. Netflix doesn't have his own movie house, no cinemas around, but the largest movie house around. iTunes, you know it, Amazon, you know it. You can imagine that type of network economy is growing. So these economies are obviously disrupting the existing processes around. Either we follow with them or we are left behind. Now look at the India part also. Since 2015, when the government of India has been pushing for digitalization, I know initially people thought, oh, this guy doesn't have a smartphone. Everybody doesn't have it around. But I can show the data to you. And this is from 2013 to 2017. It has already gone, when I look at the smartphone itself shipments, it's gone six times. And when you look at the mobile data traffic, it's gone 60 times. Mainly, I would say some of the companies came up with free data is available around 60 times growth. And people who have got now addicted to this, obviously, this is becoming part of the life around. And if you look at the online shopping also, from 2 to 8.5, that means four times, five times, it has increased around. So people are getting used to e-commerce in this thing around. So India is also on the path of digitalizations. What level we are, there's an organization called IMD, which does the ranking, worldwide ranking, called World Digital Competitiveness Ranking. India comes when it comes to digitalizations at number 51. And when we talk of ranking, it's a combination of three factors around the knowledge of the people, 
at the knowledge level, we are 37 in the world. And technology wise, because we are not absorbed the technology and we don't feel necessity of it. We are 59 number at future readiness. We are at 51. And the country which is coming as number one is Singapore. And quite a lot of Indians are working there itself. That means the environment is still not fully ready to become digital in India. Number two is Sweden, number three is US in the world, and India comes 51. But I think when you see the figure, that means the figure is improving over the years around. Let's get back to, after giving the overview of what where do we stand in India, let's move to industry 4.0. What exactly is industry 4? So use the word industry is nothing to do with manufacturing. It could be a service industry, because India is still a service industry much more. If I look at the economy, 60% is going to service industry. Manufacturing is still a small component. Although we're trying to increase the manufacturing, but still service industry dominates around. So the first industrial revolutions goes back to 1784, with the steam engines, the coal engines, all those things around. Second industrial revolution happened when Ford came up around with the mass productions. First assembly line in 1870. So people came with the concept of supply chain. Although the term supply chain was coined in 90s, 19s, I mean 1970s and something, but basic cons philosophy was there when the assembly line came up forward. I think the supply chain concept came up around because things have to move in the conveyor line. Conveyor line means the conveyor line can't have go with hitches around. It can't stop. So that means parts have to be flowing with them so that nothing stops on the way. Third industrial revolutions, use of electronic, IT systems, all those things came up in the control. CNC machines came up around. CAM came around. But the fourth industrial revolution, when I look around, is we're talking a digitally connected world. I think this has mushroomed the production also. So the growth has grown, if you can see, on the right side, it's grown much bigger. So this is where the industry 4.0. So if we want to be 4.0, and World Economic Forum, which has a meeting every year, our prime minister was also there, Mr. Trump, President Trump was also there. You can imagine all big players, they talk about where the world is moving. Now let's look at the vision of industry 4.0. So when we talk of industry 4.0, we're talking of digital supply chain. We're talking of smart manufacturing. We're talking of digital products. We're talking of data analytics. So this is what is coming around. But in the future, if I expand this concept, it is going to get into digital ecosystem. So today we are talking of the digital supply chain and soon I think we'll talk about the ecosystem itself. Now, when we talk of the vision of 4.0, if you want that to be realized, most enterprise processes must become more digital. So if we want, that means a critical element of the evolution of this would be, we want a connected, smart, highly efficient supply chain ecosystem. So when I talk of supply chain ecosystem, I'm talking of customer as part of it. My suppliers are also part of it. My distributors, we're all ecosystem. But the, today, if you look around, I had the chance to work in few companies as a consultant on supply chain. I could see easily, First thing is supply chain is nothing but to take care of distribution. And they're still in a silo form. The guy who's doing a production planning is sitting in the other corner. The guy who's doing a procurement is doing a separate corner. Inventory management is another one. And the guy who's doing SNOP, sales and operation planning around, they're different. So I think there's a need to connect them together. We cannot work with the silos approach around. Now, digitization brings down those walls. That's what we are looking around is 
once we get into digitization, those walls which we have between various functions, they'll go away. And we move into integrated ecosystem era. Let's look at the digital supply chain. When we talk of digital supply chain, and that there are many other digital things, digital workplace, digital product, digital customers. Here we are talking of integrated planning, very popular subject nowadays. Everybody's talking around it. Instead of doing a planning based on the forecast given by the sales people, I do my planning and then say, guys, my job is over. I pass on the things to the people on the demand planners, production planners. But then if any change happens to the customer, it comes in a linear path. But if all of us are integrated in a linear circular way, every information goes to everyone. So everybody's antennas are ready to react on it. So become more proactive than just following the reaction of Patara. So we want the logistic visibility. Thousands of trucks are moving on the roads around. I want a visibility around, which are full, which are going half empty, which routes are more crowded. So you want complete visibility of this. Around. Another thing which comes up is procurement 4.0, which also is there around, because procurement is also part of supply chain management. So procurement means the way can I make the all steps? Those of you who are from procurement, you'll find there are 15 to 20 steps from the requisition till the delivery and till the payments. And most of them goes with the hard copies philosophy. A lot of follow up around. Can those operations be digitalized? If those operations could be digitized, processes could be automated around. If I know very well, this has gone to this low level and this is my benchmark, it places the order automatically. I don't have to send a guys, go and check what is the level of the stock. Then the guy comes, takes approval and places the order. So these processes also could be automated. But again, based on data, based on data analytics, smart warehousing. And then we're looking at the big warehouses around. Obviously, Amazon is a wonderful example around. Walmart is another one of the big ones. And the area occupied is so much that if you want to put the assembly line somewhere, packages, you need a robotics. So at the right time, at the right place, the robots bring the goods around and you put on the belt and pack it up and distribute. Efficient spare parts. Then we're talking about autonomous and B2C logistics. Autonomous, obviously, in the Western world, very important around because particularly if you look from the vehicle side, there are shortage of drivers in Canada, America. While in India, this may not be the relevant, but still issues could be there. Prescriptive supply chain analytics around. Now, if you look at the SCM, the way it has evolved, I said to you from the very beginning when the Ford came with an assembly line, that was Industrial Revolution 2. Then we came up with this shipping container philosophy around containers were not concept was not existing. EDI was not existing around EDI, as I told you, I was working in 80s and 85 in EDI standards. Then came this whole thing of ERP, the innovative part, and then there came the modern age, and now we're talking the new future age. So you keep in mind, these are evolving. As the jobs are evolving, supply chain is evolving, everything is evolving with the time. Let's look at the overview of supply chain. I think this is where I've told you very often, I don't want to repeat it. There are discrete siloed steps involving marketing, product development, manufacturing, distribution, eventually customers, all connected. Now, when we talk of digital technologies, I will be touching to some extent, keeping in mind the time, we're talking of analytics, we're talking of robots, we're talking of 3D printing, we'll talk of all those subjects. At the end of the day, when we're talking of digitizations, we're looking at to improve our competitive advantage. Traditional supply chain, the problem in the traditional supply chain is a very straight line. It comes from one supplier, goes to another supplier, supplier distributes to you, to your manufacturing. In between, there's a, again, inbound logistics is there around, then goes to your office. 
then this goes to distributors goes to warehouse goes to fulfillment centers goes to customers the data are not available at the right time so challenges when using available data is to make smart decision when you don't have a data how do you make a decision sir and sometime there's a lack of direction or involvement from the leadership also many company the leadership i have seen in india since i have been here now for 9 years it moves in a straight line they think this is the way to work so when we come to the circular or when we come to the control towers around you will find every information is centrally available customer is totally empowered so the silos mentality is also there around we have to get out of this around so the traditional supply chain if you look in this way starting from supplier to customer lack of end to end visibility i am in the store i don't know what is happening at the supplier level i don't know whether the supplier is delivering at the right time what is happening to the distribution center what is happening to the distribution i know only my activities are now and customer also is still hoping the goods will come on the right time the way it was planned fragmentations we are all fragmented no informations and the tools are there but still information is not available around the reliability of the data and system cannot be agile it cannot be responsive if we don't have the right data sir effectiveness so this is way i would say the digital supply chain the customer is in the center of it all the activity which are going around are around it so the guys customer is also in knowledge of it everybody knows what's going on everywhere what's happening in the sales i don't have to call the sales if anything happened with the customers any demand has gone down it affects everybody in the chain so everybody is ready how to react and how to work so the planning become digital supply become digital manufacturing also become digital and logistic also is digital so that means when i say digital mean the processes are digital so processes are automated i want to say digital the processes are automated while the documentation which is required to move the goods from one end to another end including the customer and all those things around they are all digital documents. so before your goods reaches the custom already it has been passed on so this is where now come the maturity part we do it same thing for procurement we do it for supply chain what level we are the digital maturity one first thing is obviously the siloed goods i'm working in procurement i'm working in logistic i'm working in warehousing i'm working in inventory management everybody is doing their own goals second is functional part let's say we become a part of supply chain management we are one function so each one does it function by function but then we look at integrated way then we go demand driven so that means you are really becoming a digital value chain because the customer is part of it and the next level the level 5 we talking about the ecosystem so it is not within your enterprise itself digital your other partners which are there with the supplier or customers they are also the ecosystem partners so that's what we look in the outside in that's what happens you know and this is where it comes from the gartner and same thing has been explained i think same five stages here yeah? here also i think i'm sure many of you know what we hear about too many buzz word about this some will say guy this is another buzz word this is an hype around it so this is where i think this hype part gartner is maintaining all the new ideas around whether it's about blockchain whether it's about 3d printing whether it's about supply chain digital part so they give you what level they are are they still in the very beginning marketing stage are they are still a disillusion about it are people have got totally enlightened around it and that's the plateau of productivity so you can see many of the new ideas which we talking will be talking around many of them falls under the slope of enlightenment that means people have already started using it understanding it and they are coming into this 
when we talk of the whole digitalization, I'm working in my own old fashioned way. I've got tons of documents, tons of papers. Fine. Everything has to be approved. Everything has to be shown to the bosses in a hard copy. The guy has to put his signatures around. But now when I'm moving into the total digitizations, on, paper, on table, there's no paper at all. Everything is digital. So when this transformation happens, the digital transformation, we increase the ag agility around, responsiveness, cut down the risk. I don't get the risk because supply chain has risk. We all know very well. But that risk should not come in the last minute around. Then the bigger margins, improved product values, and last is enterprise growth. That's what we do. Today and tomorrow, when we look around, today we have a manual data gathering across systems and roles. If one person doesn't come to the office, the work gets stuck around. Now we are talking real-time connections, manual collaborations, digitized collaborations. Because customer, me, supplier, everybody is getting the same information, we can collaborate together. My finance, myself, everybody is getting the information. We can collaborate through that information. And then simulation can happen automatically. If something goes wrong, my demand goes down, my supplier is not able to deliver, which happens. There's a strike of the transporters. Things are getting delayed. What is going to happen to me? So what if it happens? We are ready with these simulations. Now, now the planning is cadence based. And here is a continuous event. Now. It is not just a month. OK, we'll have a SNOP meeting. Everybody sits down, makes a big talk around. And then we find after two hours, things have changed. So this is even driven around. And all are connected very well, integrated planning around. Now, when we want to change this transformation, there are various drivers. First driver is obviously you need the people. Customer demands are there. Increased disruption from use of new business models, faster pace of customers, and market change. I, to me, this is a major thing around. Customers are becoming very demanding. If I go back 20, 30 years back, if somebody has sent the goods, even the letter, if it takes 30 days, 20 days, people were not bothered. Today, if it doesn't come in one day, the two days courier service, because we send sometimes material from our office, people start calling us and within three days, sir, we have not got the material. Enough. So you can imagine around the pace has gone, change, everything has gone. So people are very demanding. And that adds value, actually, if I can deliver at the right time. If I can give the information on the spot, it adds value. If I say I have to go and check and then I will let you know, it gives a wrong impression. It doesn't improve the customer experience. And the supply chain is also becoming complex with so many complexities, so many players, and so many other issues around. I think one needs how to change it. The benefits and all these things, I think I've touched already. Now, this is the way framework looks like. Starting from the bottom, like in a house when you make, there's a foundation, then you make the walls, you put the roof, then your digital supply chain is ready. Now supply chain is ready, but the business model within your own organizations, has it also changed or not? Are you only changing the supply chain? So the starts with A, the first thing is supply chain integration. So all the players in the supply chain are integrated. It may be a procurement guy, maybe a logistic guy, maybe inventory, warehousing, supplier, customer, integrate. Then automation. Some function, if they can be automated, they don't have to wait for something. Then supply chain reconfigurations. If we need it, we have to reconfigure it. I can't live with the same old style of chain and expecting all these things around. Then analytics has to be there. Tons of data I'm collecting around. But the data is not just for storage. Data is for conversion, it converting it to information, and from information to intelligence. If I cannot convert the data into intelligence, data is a dump. Data is just lying. I remember in 2006 when I launched, we lost it around worldwide. 
ERP. Beautiful features were there, real time, blah, blah, all those things around. But the data which was created through various tons of purchase order, logistics, and everything were lying there. Nobody was making use of it. So then we were looking at how do we make intelligence out of it or not. Then comes the next level, the digital planning, digital supply, and digital manufacturing. We're talking of 3D printer, we're talking of automated loading on the machines around, robotic loadings around. If I'm going into Marathis in the good old days, if your car is being made, the guy will be welding himself. And then you find he gets a call and then he leaves the one piece of part of the welding and then the body has gone further. But now it is all through the robotics. So it's again robotics means the processes have become digital in that sense. Around. Digital logistics, all the movement of the goods, all connected to the clouds. Every information is available around. Now, once we have moved to this level, then we come to the digital supply chain. The next level come is the digital business model around. That means the products needs to be connected, product and services, all embedded services which goes behind it. The products which are connected and service, omni-channel distribution. So omni-channel means when we are looking around, you've got different ways of distributing. Around. You may have a warehouse, you may have a store, you might be having online, the different omni-channel distributions. Now, same thing I've tried to explain here around. So this is for the later stage when you guys want to see online. The areas of digitizations, the four I told you around, it clarifies much more in detail. Similarly, area of digitalization and what we are looking at the next level, which I was showing in the framework, demand forecasting. This is the one where the change is bound to happen big way. If many companies today are making the losses I think their problem is they're still living 30 years back when they were the monopoly of manufacturers. There was only one car manufacturer in India, one scooter manufacturer in India. Forecasting was very simple. But today the choices to the suppliers, customers are too many. And doing the demand forecasting, depending on whether the rain was there or not, whether the salary increase has gone or not, how is the job market, Every factor is affecting the forecast. So that means you need a real integrated approach around. And the data, this is going to affect a lot. And the next area which is affecting is inventory management. If I look in the supply chain area, with my experience of whatever four decades, there are two areas which is affecting now much more. And same was not here when I started my career seven years back in the 70s. I was with Tata's. These are not so important. Even if it's lying in the inventory, so what? The prices are bound to increase. But today, nobody wants to block their money in the inventory. The design may change in six months. So these two things are very, very crucial. I would put it around if I look from the digitalization. Areas of digitalization, again, at the top level, when you want to make the business as a whole digital. So here again, the forecasting, capacity planning, production planning are very, very important around. To me, this is the biggest advantage can come through digital approach. Obviously, inventory management logistics will be there, but this is a major, major change I can think around. Now look at the analytics part. You're getting tons of data around, torrent of data around. I mean, like artificial intelligence was there in the 70s also, but didn't succeed much. Nobody talked much about it because the data was not there. Today, we have tons of data and data can be analyzed. So we have the data coming from warehouses, appliances, transactions, imagery, socials, geopolitical, everything is coming to you. Then you're doing data aggregators. And from data aggregator, you're creating your digital capabilities around. So automatically, when you feel my data is in the warehouses, is, my inventory is going down or something is more, my supplier is having a problem, having a strike, raw material is not coming, traffic is bad, things are not going to reach in two hours, it may take two days to reach. So those factors can be digitized. Data analytics can help you take a quick actions. 
So this is to me a wonderful thing for Monsanto's, how this could be used very well. Now, another thing which is becoming very off late, very popular worldwide and India also, some companies have started thinking around this. We call it intelligent control towers. Control towers are there, but are they intelligent or not? See, one is called smart, one is called intelligent. Smart means you're getting all the information. Intelligent means it can take automatic decision also. It's like a human being, they can take a decision also. So today we have been focusing on visibility, visibility and transparency. But now people say, guys, fine, I know where my things are. But that is alone not good enough. So you also want to have a control tower like in the aeroplane airport side, you have a control towers, which aeroplane coming so they don't hit each other's around. Here also we got different players, could be customers, could be purchasing, could be supplier, could be logistics, operation, warehousing. Everybody is connected. Any change in anything around is passed on there and data analytics comes up with the solutions around. And that cognitive part is self-correcting the supply chain. That means if I have given an order of 30,000 pieces and I know my demand has gone down, immediately my supplier will come to know that I'm having trouble. I cannot need 30,000. I need to cut down to 20,000. Immediate masses go around. I don't have to wait in a straight line method. Sales people will come and tell me. Somebody else will tell us, production planning will tell us, everyone knows this. So we work as a team, that's what we're doing. Okay, now let's, this is where I thought around that one should know if we're not integrated, we are more like this. We are like a boat in the supply chain, different players. Some are struggling, they think, oh, I have the whole air this side. The bad guy who's sitting, they say, hole is not there. But they all forget the boat will sink for all of them. They can't be happy around, guys, I'm sitting on the left or right. It's a boat is one, the boat is a company. If few functions are not doing well, it has an implication on others. So there's a need to integrate around. Instead of saying I'm doing best, but not my colleague, at the end of the day, it's a one boat. Now let's talk around the digital supply chain transformation. So when we are, we have, I hope we got convinced that there's a need to transform. So now once we get convinced around it, obviously there are different things which comes into the picture. People obviously comes to the picture. I will not touch the focus on people keeping in mind the time. Organization have to plan their training around. I will focus a lot on the technology part because that's the one which is creating, enabling us basically. And then later on, people have to be trained on the technology to make best use of it around. The key enablers are, first is IoT, you can see around the sensors, geolocations, you're all connected. And think of the miniaturized, so miniaturized sensors, they can pass on the information to anyone around. Then we're talking about robotics. And robotics means things can be loaded, unloaded, or working in a place which is unsafe. Obviously, the robotics comes and pitches there now. The big data is around. So big data is something, when we say big data, I mean, for a human elements to deal with those data, to make a meaningful impact of it, is impact, impractical through the Excel spreadsheet around. So this is why we are calling around big data means you have much more data around, which a human elements can do it. That's what we do. So let me walk through the first is the cloud computing part. Cloud is one, I think it goes back to 2012, 13, when I just came to India, everybody was talking about the clouds and cloud. But today, if you can look around, cloud is becoming very popular. I don't need to store into my servers around. I don't need to have my own IT people just storing and this. I know some banks will still love it because they feel the secrecy can go out. So there is a cloud around. So cloud people are storing there, people are, so they are maintaining the servers and your computers are there around worldwide, your supplier computers, your computers. So basically all of us are connected to the cloud around. Sometimes you know, people don't buy the software. They say, guys, we'll take the applications and pay them based on users basis. 
So that's what we're talking about cloud. So cloud is very popular nowadays. I remember my timing when I was in the UN, we used to have a big wear center for servers that has to be kept as under the air conditioned rooms around. We had many people who were just managing it. Well, that was not our major niche. Major function was development. So we had passed on that to the servers. That function we pass on to the cloud now. So you don't need this. Now, next one comes once we know the clouds are there, understanding Internet of Things around. So that means we are all things. You, me are also part of the things. You may call Internet of Objects. You may call ourselves objects and things. It could be a table, could be a chair, could be computers, could be anything around. All could have sensors, and those sensors can pass on the signals. That means with those, we get connected. We have the internet, but we have the sensors, and then we all get connected through this IoT. And once we are connected, then each one data is passed on to each other. I work, let's say I'm in a logistic business, 200 trucks. Each one has a SIM, each one has a sensors, information passes on. Where they are, one has met with an accident, one is having two less load, they can transfer the data, material around. Every information from one end to another, and I'm driving a car, information can come straight to me, guys, this is not the right path, maybe you may take it, deroute yourself, deroute yourself. So IOTs are becoming very popular, and they're creating more data also. Cisco is doing a big thing. IBM is doing this. Many companies have now come up in this business around. So when we talk around smart logs, smart thermostats, smart cars, so basically when we use the smart means, they take action themselves. I have a smart thermostat. I'm sending my goods, basically the food stuff, medical bulk drugs, which are very sensitive with temperatures. If it's very sensitive and I feel the temperature should be only 10 degree or 12 degree, the moment it becomes 15, it automatically gets the signals and starts cooling more. So in the process, there are smart thermostat which takes care of reacting and acting. So this is where the word smart. Now these devices are becoming a part of emerging category called Internet of Things. The next thing which is important for the technology when we talk of digitization, so after clouds, IoT, the next one is big data. The term big data means is because of the size. For a human element, it's very difficult to manage it and make meaningful impact of it. What is the inference out of it? What in, in, so if you look around the challenge which happens, I had a project with one company we did some time back. The biggest problem was the company is one of the top companies in India. But the data, what they have, is not codified. So how are we in capturing of the complete data? The curation part of this, storage part of it, search part of it, sharing part of it, transfer analysis. So this is a problem which has many companies around with the data as part of it. The next thing which is very important is artificial intelligence, machine language, machine learning, and deep learning. They're all connected. Artificial intelligence has been for many years around. Even in 70s, it was there. But this was not very popular because the data was not there. How can you do intelligence when you don't have sufficient data around? You need much bigger pie of the data around to make meaningful impact of it. Around. Machine learning came up with algorithmic. Now has come with the deep learning around. So they're all basically, you could say, machine learning is a subset of artificial intelligence. And then further, if you talk of deep learning, is again a subset of machine learning. If I just want to talk around the examples of this one, let me take up, when we say artificial intelligence, we are looking at how the human beings think, how human beings behave, the rationality part. If all that can be put into a robot or somewhere functions around, let's say I go to the department store. Today I'm asking somebody, guys, where can I find this item? 
And that information everybody knows this on this plane, this and this. So if there is a robber, and one company has done in the US called Lovis, and those Lovis robots basically we just they understand two languages. They can do the voice recognitions. You ask them, guys, I want to buy, let's say, table salt. The guy will take you, you just follow the robot. I will answer you, go to so and so shelf. So because that information is already built into the mind of the guy. So when you ask for it, it recognizes your voice, understand what you're looking for, system searches salt, system tells us to the robot, it is so and so. System is working in a very surface. So that's what we call it as artificial intelligence. And these are working on it. Then we have intelligence as example with chess. I think you must have seen once it came, one of our top player of India, the chess player, Mr. Anand. Then we had his playing with IBM computers. So you can imagine the computers sometimes have equally smart and more intelligent than human beings also, sometimes, because they can move the data much faster. That's the advantage they have around. Goals of AIs. Basically, what we are looking with artificial intelligence, there are some areas which are very dangerous, some tedious tasks to be done, which human could, we could risk the life of a human element. So the computers can do that thing. Artificial intelligence can do that thing around. And the process, artificial intelligence can do some other functions around. Understand the principles of human intelligence. What is machine learning? Let's go into this. So it's a part of a branch of artificial intelligence. It's more to link with algorithm. So basically it's a solution provider. It's a formula based. It collects a wide range of data around. And based on that, it comes with empirical data. So intelligence requires knowledge. It is necessary for the computers to acquire knowledge. Machine learning. You can also use it around that. Suppose you want to recognize somebody's face around. You're going through the migrations. And somebody has said, this guy is, has a bad reputation around. That is already stored the information. But then they want to recognize the face and compare with someone. Machine learning helps it around. Now, moving towards continuous planning, that's what we are talking around. I think this is where I think the focus is today. So when you look at the stages of digital transformation, some of you might be still working in business as usual. Three people sitting around, as you see, sharing discussion, sharing this. Number two is becoming present and active. Then you're becoming very formalized, you're becoming strategic, and you're becoming convert, innovative and adoptive. So this is what the various stages are there. Now you can see yourself what stage you are. The way I've seen in the top companies in India, still we are fragmented. The term supply chain is nothing, but the only thing it is just to take care of distribution, take care of planning it, making the demand plan and giving it to them and having a once a meet meeting and taking care of inventories, that's all. Now the digital way of life that is becoming very important around, I think I gave you example already in the beginning. I told you, if you imagine a world, Automation comes together with technology. You need a part. 3D printer picks up the details. Print the finished product. And you also we use 3D printing for tooth. If you want to get implants around, it's done by 3D printers. It is then picked by robots from the shelves and packaged and placed into the self-driving truck. The truck leaves the facilities. The drones are automatically dispatched from the truck to deliver the products while moving. The truck never stops until arriving for reloading. So this is not the imaginary thing I would say, is happening in many places. So in short, the way we look at SCM with the future, the customer is a focal person. It's all about customer. And for that, you need a continuous planning, you need supplier integration, you need factory of the futures, big data, IoT, all those things. Around. Well, friend, with this, I know I want to thank you all. So.